I discovered my husband's secret family and my daughter hated me for leaving him. Five years later, she uncovers the truth and shows up at my door. Growing up in a small town in the Midwest, I always dreamed of a life filled with adventure and romance. My parents, hardworking folks who ran a local diner, instilled in me the values of honesty and perseverance. But I yearned for something more, something beyond the familiar streets and faces of my hometown. When I turned 18, I made the bold decision to move to the city for college. It was terrifying and exhilarating all at once. I found a part-time job at a quaint bookstore to help pay for my expenses. Little did I know that this job would change the course of my life forever. It was a crisp autumn day when Ryan first walked into the bookstore. He was looking for a rare edition of The Great Gatsby, and I happened to know exactly where it was. As I reached for the book on a high shelf, our hands brushed, and I felt a jolt of electricity. Ryan was everything I'd ever dreamed of, tall, handsome, with piercing blue eyes and a smile that could light up a room. We started talking, and I was immediately captivated by his charm and wit. He was 24, already successful in his career as a junior partner at a prestigious law firm. Ryan asked me out for coffee, and before I knew it, we were spending every free moment together. Our whirlwind romance was like something out of a fairy tale. Ryan took me to fancy restaurants, bought me designer clothes, and even surprised me with a weekend trip to Paris for my 20th birthday. I was head over heels in love, convinced that I had found my soulmate. When Ryan proposed two years later, I didn't hesitate to say yes. The ring was gorgeous, a massive diamond that sparkled like nothing I'd ever seen. My parents were hesitant, worried that I was too young and that Ryan and I came from different worlds. But I was sure that our love could conquer any obstacle. Our wedding was a lavish affair, held at a beautiful vineyard just outside the city. I felt like a princess in my designer gown, walking down the aisle to the man of my dreams. Ryan's parents were there, of course, his father, a stern-looking judge, and his mother, a socialite known for her charity work. They were polite but distant, and I overheard Ryan's mother making a snide comment about my quaint hometown. The first few years of our marriage were a blur of happiness. We traveled the world, sipping champagne in the Maldives, exploring ancient ruins in Peru, skiing in the Swiss Alps. Ryan's career continued to flourish, and I put my own ambitions on hold, content to be the perfect wife and hostess for his business dinners. When I found out I was pregnant at 25, I was overjoyed. Ryan seemed happy too, but looking back, I realized his enthusiasm wasn't quite what I'd expected. He was supportive, of course, accompanying me to doctor's appointments and helping set up the nursery. But there was a distance in his eyes that I couldn't quite place. Lindsay was born on a rainy Tuesday in April. She was perfect, ten tiny fingers, ten tiny toes, and a head full of dark hair just like her father's. I threw myself into motherhood with gusto, relishing every moment with my beautiful baby girl. As Lindsay grew, I noticed Ryan becoming more distant. He started working later and later, often not coming home until long after Lindsay and I were asleep. His business trips became more frequent, sometimes lasting weeks at a time. When he was home, he was distracted, always checking his phone or lost in thought. I tried to talk to him about it, but he always brushed off my concerns. It's just work stress, he'd say, planting a quick kiss on my forehead before retreating to his home office. I wanted to believe him, to trust in the love we'd built together. Lindsay was a daddy's girl from the start. Ryan doted on her when he was home, bringing her expensive toys and taking her on special father-daughter outings. I was happy to see them bonding, even as I felt a growing distance between Ryan and myself. It was on Lindsay's 10th birthday that my world came crashing down. Ryan had promised to be home early for her party, but as the hours ticked by, he was nowhere to be seen. Lindsay was devastated, crying into the birthday cake I'd spent hours decorating. Frustrated and worried, I decided to check Ryan's home office for any clues about where he might be. As I rifled through his desk drawers, my hand hit a small lever, revealing a hidden compartment. My heart pounding, I reached inside. What I found shattered my entire world. Photos of Ryan with another woman, a petite blonde with a warm smile. And two children, a boy and a girl, maybe seven and five years old. They were posed in front of a Christmas tree, all wearing matching sweaters and wide grins. My hands shaking, I dug deeper. Birth certificates for Tyler and Sophie. School records. And there, at the bottom of the pile, a marriage certificate. Ryan had married Amanda three years before he'd even met me. I don't remember much of what happened next. I know I somehow made it through the rest of Lindsay's party, plastering on a fake smile and making excuses for Ryan's absence. After the guests left and Lindsay was in bed, I sat in the dark living room, surrounded by deflated balloons and discarded wrapping paper, waiting for my husband to come home. When Ryan finally walked through the door past midnight, I was ready. I showed him what I'd found, demanding answers. His face went pale, then flushed with anger. 
He accused me of snooping, of not trusting him. But as I pressed for the truth, his defenses crumbled. The story came out in bits and pieces. He'd married Amanda Young, pressured by their conservative families. They'd had Tyler and Sophie in quick succession. But Ryan had felt trapped, suffocated by the responsibilities of family life. When he met me, he saw a chance at the excitement and freedom he craved. He swore he'd meant to end things with Amanda, but could never bring himself to hurt her or the kids. So he constructed this elaborate double life, convincing himself that he could have it all. I was numb with shock and betrayal. Everything I thought I knew about my life, about the man I loved, was a lie. I told Ryan I wanted a divorce. He begged me to reconsider, promising to end things with Amanda for real this time. But the trust was irreparably broken. The next few months were a nightmare. Ryan fought dirty in the divorce proceedings, using his family's connections to paint me as an unstable, unfit mother. He manipulated Lindsay, telling her that I was destroying our family out of spite and jealousy. Lindsay, always closer to her father, sided with Ryan. She refused to believe the truth about his other family, convinced that I was lying to hurt her beloved dad. It broke my heart to see my little girl look at me with such anger and distrust. The divorce was finalized when Lindsay was 11. Despite Ryan's considerable wealth, I was ordered to pay child support. He got primary custody, with me only getting visitation every other weekend. It felt like a cruel joke, I'd lost everything, including my daughter's love. The years that followed were a struggle to rebuild my life from the ground up. I got a job as an administrative assistant, slowly working my way up the corporate ladder. I moved into a small but cozy apartment, trying to make it feel like home despite Lindsay's reluctance to visit. Every attempt to connect with Lindsay was met with cold indifference or outright hostility. She parroted Ryan's lies about me being selfish and destructive, refusing to listen to my side of the story. I watched helplessly as my sweet little girl transformed into a stranger before my eyes. Now, at 32, I'm finally in a better place. I've got a good job as a project manager, a tight-knit group of friends who've become my support system, and I've even started dating again, though trust doesn't come easily anymore. But the pain of losing Lindsay's love still haunts me. I've missed so much of her life, her first day of high school, her first crush, her first heartbreak. I see glimpses of her life through social media, and it feels like looking through a window at a family that should have been mine. Yesterday, everything changed again. I was settling in for a quiet evening with a glass of wine and a good book when there was a knock at my door. I opened it to find Lindsay standing there, looking upset and conflicted. Confused but hopeful, I invited her in, my heart racing with a mixture of joy and apprehension. Little did I know, this unexpected visit was about to turn both our worlds upside down once again. Hash update 1 as Lindsay stepped into my apartment, I couldn't help but notice how much she'd grown. At 16, she was nearly as tall as me, with Ryan's dark hair and my green eyes. She looked around nervously, taking in the space that should have been familiar but was now foreign to her. I offered her a seat on the couch, my mind racing with questions. Why was she here? What had happened? As I handed her a glass of water, I noticed her hands were shaking slightly. Mom, she began, her voice barely above a whisper, I. I need to talk to you about something. I sat down beside her, careful to maintain some distance. Of course, sweetheart. You can tell me anything. Lindsay took a deep breath, then the words came tumbling out in a rush. I found out about dad's other family. Tyler and Sophie. And Amanda. It's all true, isn't it? My heart sank and soared simultaneously. The truth was finally out, but at what cost to my daughter? Yes, Lindsay. It's true. I'm so sorry you had to find out like this. Tears welled up in Lindsay's eyes. I feel so stupid. All these years, I thought. I believed. She broke down, sobs racking her body. Instinctively, I moved to hug her, but she flinched away. The gesture hurt, but I understood. There was too much history, too much pain between us. As Lindsay calmed down, she explained how she discovered the truth. She'd been using Ryan's laptop to work on a school project when a notification popped up, a text message from Amanda. Curiosity got the better of her, and she started digging. It didn't take long for her to uncover the whole sordid story. I confronted Dad, Lindsay said, her voice hard. He tried to lie at first, but when I showed him what I'd found, he broke down. He told me everything. About how he'd been living this double life for years. About how you found out. About the divorce. She looked at me, her eyes filled with a mixture of pain and dawning understanding. He said you tried to turn me against him. But that's not true, is it? I shook my head, fighting back my own tears. No, sweetheart. I never wanted to turn you against your father. I just. I couldn't stay in a marriage built on lies. And I couldn't bear the thought of sharing the painful truth with you. 
Maybe that was wrong of me. I thought I was protecting you, but maybe I was just protecting myself. Lindsay nodded slowly, processing this information. I've been so awful to you, she whispered. All those things I said, the way I treated you. God, Mom, I'm so sorry. The apology, so long awaited, washed over me like a wave. But with it came a torrent of complicated emotions, relief, vindication, but also a lingering hurt that couldn't be erased with a simple sorry. I understand, Lindsay, I said softly. You were put in an impossible situation. Your father. He manipulated both of us. We sat in silence for a while, the weight of years of misunderstandings and misconnections hanging heavy between us. Finally, Lindsay spoke again. I don't think I can go back home right now, she said. Being around dad, knowing what I know now. I just can't. I was wondering. Could I maybe stay here with you for a while? My heart leapt at the prospect, but a small voice of caution held me back. Of course you can stay, sweetheart. But are you sure that's what you want? This is a big change, and we have a lot to work through. Lindsay nodded, looking more vulnerable than I'd seen her in years. I know. I just. I need some space to figure things out. And I think. I think I'd like to get to know you again. The real you, not the version dad painted for me all these years. We spent the next few hours talking, really talking, for the first time in years. Lindsay shared more about her life, her friends, her struggles in school, her dreams for the future. I told her about my job, my hobbies, the life I'd built for myself in the wake of the divorce. As the night wore on, I could see Lindsay fighting to keep her eyes open. Why don't you take my bed tonight? I offered. We can figure out more permanent arrangements tomorrow. Lindsay hesitated, then nodded gratefully. As I showed her to my room, she paused in the doorway. Mom? She said softly. Thank you. For not turning me away. After everything. I felt a lump form in my throat. You're my daughter, Lindsay. No matter what's happened between us, that will never change. I love you. Lindsay didn't say it back, but the small smile she gave me before closing the door felt like the first ray of sunlight after a long, dark storm. After Lindsay went to bed, I stayed up late, my mind whirling with the events of the day. Part of me was overjoyed at the chance to reconnect with my daughter. But another part, the part that remembered years of rejection and pain, urged caution. I called my best friend, Tara, needing her level-headed advice. Tara had been my rock throughout the divorce and its aftermath, offering a shoulder to cry on and a swift kick in the pants when I needed it. That's huge, honey, Tara said when I finished recounting the evening's events. But you need to be careful. Lindsay's hurting right now, and she's reaching out to you. That's great, but it doesn't erase the past five years. I know, I sighed. I want to welcome her with open arms, but... But you're scared of getting hurt again, Tara finished for me. That's completely valid. Listen, take things slow. Be there for Lindsay, but set clear boundaries. And for God's sake, don't let Ryan manipulate either of you again. After hanging up with Tara, I made up the couch for myself and tried to get some sleep. But couldn't. My mind kept replaying moments from the past, Lindsay's first steps, her first day of school, the last time she told me she loved me before the divorce. And now, this unexpected chance at reconciliation. As I finally drifted off in the early hours of the morning, I made a silent promise to myself and to Lindsay. We take this one day at a time, rebuilding our relationship brick by brick. It wouldn't be easy, but nothing worth having ever is. Hash update 2 It's been two months since Lindsay came back into my life, and to say it's been a roller coaster would be an understatement. We've had moments of connection that have brought tears to my eyes and arguments that have left us both frustrated and hurt. But through it all, we're slowly learning how to be mother and daughter again. Lindsay decided to stay with me temporarily while she figures things out with Ryan. Living together has been challenging, to say the least. We're both used to our own space and routines, and suddenly sharing a small apartment has led to some clashes. Lindsay leaves wet towels on the bathroom floor, I nag her about doing her homework. It's mundane, everyday stuff, but it feels monumental given our history. We started seeing a family therapist together, Dr. Ramirez. She's been helping us navigate the complex emotions and dynamics between us. In our first session, Dr. Ramirez had us each write down our hopes and fears for our renewed relationship. Reading Lindsay's list broke my heart, she was afraid I'd abandon her again, that I didn't really want her around, that she'd messed everything up beyond repair. I realized then how much hurt Lindsay had been carrying all these years. It wasn't just about Ryan's betrayal, she felt betrayed by me too, for leaving, for not fighting harder to stay in her life. We've been working through these feelings in therapy, slowly unpacking years of misunderstandings and unspoken pain. There have been bright spots amidst the difficult conversations. 
We've started having movie nights on Fridays, taking turns picking the film. Lindsay introduced me to some of her favorite YouTubers, and I've shared my love of classic literature with her. We even tried cooking dinner together last week, it was a disaster that ended with us ordering pizza, but we laughed more than we had in years. Ryan, unsurprisingly, isn't taking this new arrangement well. He's been calling and texting Lindsay constantly, alternating between guilt-tripping her and making grand promises about how things will be different. I've had to resist the urge to interfere, reminding myself that Lindsay needs to navigate this relationship on her own terms. Last week, things came to a head when Ryan showed up at my apartment unannounced. I was in the middle of helping Lindsay with her math homework when the doorbell rang. Opening the door, I was hit by the smell of alcohol before I even registered Ryan's disheveled appearance. Where's my daughter? He slurred, trying to push past me into the apartment. I stood my ground. Ryan, you're drunk. This isn't the time or place for this. Go home. He became belligerent, shouting about how I turned Lindsay against him, how I'd ruined his life. I threatened to call the police if he didn't leave. That's when Lindsay came out of her room, drawn by the commotion. Seeing her, Ryan's demeanor changed instantly. Princess, he said, his voice softening. Come on, let's go home. You don't belong here. I watched, hard in my throat, as Lindsay approached her father. But instead of going to him, she stood beside me. Dad, she said, her voice steady despite the slight tremor in her hands, you need to leave. We can talk when you're sober, but not like this. The look of betrayal on Ryan's face was almost pitiful. He opened his mouth as if to argue, then seemed to deflate. Without another word, he turned and stumbled back to his car. After we were sure he'd driven away, I called him a cab, not willing to risk him driving in that state. Lindsay and I sat on the couch in stunned silence. Finally, Lindsay spoke. I'm sorry, she whispered. I never realized. Was he always like this? I shook my head. No, sweetheart. You're a father. He's got his demons, but this isn't like him. I think he's struggling with everything that's happened. Lindsay nodded slowly. Mom? She said after a moment. Thank you. For not badmouthing dad, even after everything. And for. For being here. We stayed up late that night, talking about things we'd never discussed before. I shared stories about the early days of my relationship with Ryan, the good and the bad. The red flags I'd ignored, the way he'd slowly isolated me from my friends and family. Lindsay listened intently, drawing parallels to her own experiences with her father. As we talked, I realized how much healing I still had to do. I'd spent so long focusing on Lindsay's pain that I hadn't fully processed my own. The next day, I called Dr. Ramirez and set up some individual therapy sessions for myself. Yesterday, we had a breakthrough in our family therapy session. Lindsay opened up about feeling torn between her love for Ryan and her anger at his betrayal. I feel like I have to choose, she said, tears streaming down her face. Between you and dad. Between the life I had and. Whatever this new life is supposed to be. Dr. Ramirez gently pointed out that it didn't have to be an either slash or situation. That it was okay to love both her parents while also being angry and hurt. That healing wasn't a linear process, and it was okay to have conflicting emotions. For the first time, Lindsay also acknowledged the harm she'd caused me by siding with Ryan all these years. I was so cruel to you, she said, meeting my eyes. I said horrible things, blamed you for everything. How can you even stand to be around me? I took her hand, my own vision blurring with tears. Because you're my daughter, I said simply. And I love you. Always have, always will. We're taking things day by day, but I'm cautiously optimistic about our future. Lindsay and I are both learning to set boundaries, communicate more openly, and forgive, both each other and ourselves. It's not easy, and I know we have a long road ahead of us. But for the first time in years, I feel like we're walking that road together. Hash update 3 It's been 6 months since my last update, and I'm happy to report that things have continued to improve between Lindsay and me. We've settled into a comfortable routine, and our relationship feels stronger than ever. Lindsay decided to stay living with me permanently. It wasn't an easy decision for her, and it led to some tense conversations with Ryan. But ultimately, she felt it was the best choice for her mental health and our healing relationship. We spent a weekend redecorating her room, turning it from a temporary crash pad into a space that truly reflects the young woman she's becoming. It was a bonding experience, filled with laughter and a few, happy, tears as we reminisced over old photos and mementos. Ryan has finally backed off, realizing that his manipulative tactics weren't working anymore. According to Lindsay, he started therapy himself, which we both cautiously see as a positive step. They're slowly rebuilding their relationship, but on Lindsay's terms this time. 
She sees him for dinner once a week, and they're talking about maybe taking a short father-daughter trip over the summer. As for me, I've been focusing on personal growth. I've taken up painting again, a hobby I'd abandoned during my marriage to Ryan. It's been incredibly therapeutic, helping me process my emotions in a healthy way. I even sold a few pieces at a local art fair last month, which was a huge confidence boost. Lindsay and I have started a new tradition of Saturday morning hikes. We pack a picnic and drive out to the nearby state park, spending hours exploring trails and talking about everything and nothing. During these walks, we've had some of our most honest conversations. Lindsay recently confided that she's thinking about changing her career plans. She'd always wanted to follow in Ryan's footsteps and become a lawyer, but now she's considering studying social work to help families affected by divorce and complex family dynamics. Seeing Lindsay turn her painful experiences into a desire to help others has been incredibly inspiring. It's reminded me of my own resilience and made me realize how far we've both come. There are still challenging days, of course. Sometimes old hurts resurface, or we fall into old patterns of communication. But now we have the tools to work through these moments together. We're not afraid to call each other out when we're being unfair or hurtful, and we're getting better at listening to understand rather than listening to respond. I'm not naive enough to think everything will be perfect from here on out. Life is messy and complicated, and we're still navigating the ripple effects of Ryan's deception. But I'm no longer afraid of the challenges ahead. Lindsay and I are facing them together, and that makes all the difference.